They were all, everyone in the world was very mad that I murdered my brother. Yeah, understandably so. All right, so everybody good? Good. Feels good? Yeah. He was in my Looks head. good? Whoa! Yeah, wow, I like that energy. What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Scoop. Tom Marks, Scoop, and Sam Claiborne. Hey, And we've got a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about such... Uh, uh, noteworthy topics as the best PSP games. Luminous. <laughs> we're gonna, yeah. We're going to look through the August 95 issue of Nintendo Power, which we have, still have in its own bag, and it comes with its own 3D glasses. And yes, I know it's September now, but I don't want to wait a whole nother year to look through this episode. <laughs> I've been waiting to get to that episode. But first, uh, Nintendo held a very significant direct yesterday. It was mm-hmm. like an almost E3 level direct, I thought, with the amount of information and uh, new games that were in there. Yeah, it was almost all third-party stuff, too, which was neat. Yeah. Um, well, they, they also g- recommended that you go play games on a third-party system. That's also true. Yeah. They, of course, gave us a big update on uh, Mario, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield and Luigi's Mansion 3. Yeah, I guess that's true. Maybe not almost all. But very cool. They also had a little bit of an update to uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons, that's but right. that didn't really have much new, new information. It was just a closer What was look. the newest thing in that? The trees will move in the wind. Just the wind? Was it the wind? <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. They Come on. They didn't have like specific <laughs> new features. It was just like, here's a new trailer, and it adds some new detail. And it was a nice trailer, too. Yeah, it's very lovely. Mm-hmm. The game looks lovely. But they also finally announced that Super Nintendo games are coming to Nintendo Switch online today and just a couple hours from now. We're recording this at 12, it's 12.37 p.m. Pacific right now, and they're supposed to go live at 3 p.m. Pacific, I think. so. It's an incredible list, and I checked, and it's the same list in Japan as it is here. Yep. Which oh. is like really cool. Parody. Because usually we get different games. Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I was thinking about, I mean, are we going to talk about it now? Because I'm, yeah. not, I'm yeah. not sure, like, what to play. Like, it's almost... Well, maybe we can help you out with that, Justin. <laughs> Uh, it is a good list. It's similar to this Super NES, or yeah, Super NES Classic list, yeah. but not exactly the same. And it includes some interesting picks, like a Japanese release, Super Puyo Puyo Two, which was never released here, and which is. Can you guys awesome. guess the first game that Damon and I played? It Probably wasn't can't. that. First of all, <laughs> the the list in its entirety is Brawl Brothers, Demon's Crest, Joe and Mac Two, Kirby's Dream Land Three, Star Fox, Super EDF Earth Defense Force. <laughs> Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, Super Puyo Puyo 2, Super Tennis, Breath of Fire, F-Zero, Kirby's Dream Course, Pilot Wings, Stunt Race FX, Super Goals and Ghosts, Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Super Soccer, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. Which game do you think Sam and I played first? Which one? Demon's Crest. No. It was a game we never played before. Ah. It was Joe and Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics, and it's totally good. Yeah. <laughs> Damon said it was the most fun he's ever had playing a video game. Yeah, and I, don't think, that's, I don't think that's hyperbole. It's, it's, uh, it's at least the second or third best caveman game. <laughs> <laughs> which is, um, there's, a lot, them. there's a lot of them. There's a lot of actually impressive stuff happening in that game. Just below Chuck Rock, which is S tier. Chuck Rock jo- is good. <laughs> Joe and Mac 1 was like famous because it was a co-op game, like Contra or whatever, and there's a, so a few of those. It's really fun. Yeah, and, and the NES, SNES game I played like crazy. I didn't realize Joe and Mac 2. Just, just as cool. I think I'm going to play Demon's Dinos. Crest first. Demon's Crest is phenomenal, and uh, that takes place in the same universe as Ghouls and Ghosts. <laughs> Extended Ghouls and, and Ghosts universe. much more playable and much less uh, mm-hmm. brutal. Yeah. I like how you can grip the wall in that game. Yep. It's like Sunsoft Batman. I actually never, game. never played it, so. It's very, it's, very good. It's like surprisingly gritty and like not yeah. fant- fantastical. It's like really trying to do Castlevania. Mm. Yeah, that's Cat- a good Capcom Castlevania. <clears throat> All I know is we live in a world now where there's online multiplayer F Zero, which is kind of incredible. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited that to is find incredible. out. I, an underrated feature about the NES games was sort of their save states and challenges, where they would drop you into a game with specific equipment at a specific time, yeah. and then have you sort of go forth. Like, like Metroid One, for example, it just plops you into the end of the game. I'm like, I yeah. don't really need to play all of Metroid One, but I'll you know run through the Mother Brand yeah. Gauntlet. Like, <laughs> so I'm excited to see whether they take that seriously with the SNES games as well. You can just put in the code Justin Bailey to do that mm-hmm. by yourself. It turns Samus into a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. Justin Bailey is a weird one because she has green hair. When you yeah. yeah, very weird. Yeah. Uh, there's some stinkers on this list, though. A bunch of Jalico games. Mm-hmm. Stinkers. And not even the good Jalico games. Yeah. Brawl, he- Brawl Brothers is on here. Although IGN gave that game a seven. Ooh. So we can't Her- be too harsh on Brawl Brothers. Harris says he bought that game new. Because Thinking it would be it would be like Final, Final Fight. Fight, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is like Final Fight and let you walk left to right and punch people with big muscles. And that's why Pear hates video games to this day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was burned by Brawl Brothers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. BBB. Uh, yeah. Let's see, is Kirby's Dream Land three good? That one I was good just one? gonna say I don't know which one three is. Yeah, I mean they're all boring and for babies. They're all terrible. All right, Hello, there we right. go. Oh. There we go. You just walk to the right and never die. <laughs> the, no, there's so. <laughs> Thanks, good. Kirby. Thanks but for inventing that. They're Kirby's, very pretty games, though. 
Who cares? <laughs> the controls are always like a, a moving Kirby around is just a joy. I don't know if uh, Super EDF Earth Defense Force is related to the current Earth Defense Force games because yeah. it doesn't look. Isn't that crazy? It's a shmup like Because Earth like Defense radius. Force is about fighting bugs and yeah. this is just about shooting ships. There's yeah. Nothing special. Shooting the ships. It's also Jalico. <laughs> Um, Sam, how do you feel about Super Mario Kart? I want to go back to talking about how bad Kirby is because <laughs> you know what? Kirby, this is, uh, is this, is this going to be a fight between us? Cause I love Kirby, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm done talking about Kirby. Uh, Mario Kart's <laughs> also terrible. <laughs> yeah. It's an is there online, is there online playing use of mode seven? Is there online playing Super Mario Kart? I mean, there should be online multiplayer with all of these. Yeah. Super, Super Mario Kart is a challenging game to go back to, I think. Hmm. I mean, even Mario Kart 64 is a little bit challenging to go back to, but it's super fun. Well, it's mm -hmm. like, so they both have the mode seven. Well, that and F-Zero are both, you know, mode yeah. seven racers. But F-Zero has the advantage of just being fast as hell and like really, you know, not as fast as F-Zero X, but it's still like hairpin turns and like really hair raising in that way. Mario Kart is slow. Mm. It's so slow. Like well, you just move like molasses. On top of that, Mario Kart does a lot of things where it it does a lot of like, things on the ground that should be 3D, like coins and I was and just going to say that. It like flickers in sprites and, yeah. and then scales them, and it's just like, it does not work anymore. Right, whereas <laughs> F-Zero keeps everything just flat. Anything you have to interact with is pretty, like, readable at a glance, and I feel like a lot of the stuff in Mario Kart You can Kart totally have Mario Kart muscle control, and your friends can have it, and then just you can just play like you did back in the day, and it's so fun, just like it was then. But if you don't have that, that game is not playable. <laughs> <laughs> um, like people are gonna get it and be like, "Oh man, this emulator feels broken. It doesn't work." <laughs> what was the last F Zero game? Uh, G G X. The one was that the what, one that tied into the uh, GameCube is the last yeah, one made by Sega. It's been that long. That was the one that tied made into the Sega. arcade game, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, maybe the arcade game is more recent too. Maybe there was like another one. Mm. You could unlock the arcade courses in GX if you. It was like Whoa. the master. You know, if you did everything in the game, they they were in it. Hmm. Yeah, that was the era of bringing your GameCube memory card to the arcade, and you could also do things like print your Pokemon Snap photos. Mm. Cool. I yeah. don't remember. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Donkey Kong Jr. is in uh, Mario Kart, though, right? Yes, yes. That's funny. Yeah, because they just abandoned that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, Yoshi's Island is amazing. It's so odd, though. I mean, Yoshi, Yoshi's Island is amazing, but like Super Mario World's not in this collection. It only is. its sequel. It is. It is. Oh, Mario yeah, World. Mario is. World's yeah, it's just weird that in the list they showed and the list we did, it's like those are separated for oh, some reason. Yeah. It's, it's not alphabetized. Okay. Well, then that, I don't no, know why. Never mind. That's not. That was on us. <laughs> <laughs> I play. You know, I've played Mario World. Uh, you know, a lot. Uh, like, I don't know how many times in my life. A half dozen. I've like, played it within the last month. I play it so yeah. much. But like Yoshi's Island, I have not touched that game in a decade. So <clears throat> excited to go back. It's definitely harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really hard to get all the coins, but it's the reward is so good because when you get all the coins, you get more levels to play. Yep. It's the perfect balance of like collecty stuff. Like you really get rewarded. It was really like the proto genesis of Nintendo's whole ethos now where like half their game is easy as heck. <laughs> yeah. Then there's like a whole back half that's incredibly hard. And like Yoshi Island, you know, I can't claim it's the absolute first game to do that. But you could see Nintendo kind of trending in that direction and servicing two different audiences in that yeah. game. I love that Super Puyo Puyo 2 is in there. I know Sega's trying to push Puyo Puyo today for some reason. Uh, I mean, I love it. But How did you get introduced to Puyo Puyo? Was it like a... Uh, in either Japanese arcades, and then they also had it on oh. Game Boy Advance, and I had it on Game Boy oh. Advance. Yeah, one song. Played a lot there. Hmm. Um, that we didn't get these at all here, it felt like, until... I, maybe the GBA one was the first one released here. I'm not sure. Yeah, right? I mean, I just um, don't... But I have a pro tip. When I was a kid. I have a Puyo Puyo pro tip, and this will get you... You know, if there's like... EPT. These are head-to-head uh, -head, uh, puzzle games, and if there's like 10 enemies you have to play through in a Puyo Puyo game, this method will easily get you through the first five, no problem. Okay. So here's this what you is do. So step by step? Yeah, so here's what you do. Step, step one. Uh, when you start dropping the Puyos, don't try to make matches or anything. Push them to the right edge of, of your play field and drop them until you just have a tower of junk. When you have a, a tower okay. of junk tower that reaches okay. the top of the screen, then start making your matches, and with a little luck, all that junk will just start randomly creating chain reactions for it like you. falls on itself. And you send all that junk over to the other side. And just doing that will easily get you through half of the game. How do you maintain friendships while playing that well? That's not the point of Puyo Puyo. <laughs> it's not, you're not playing to make friends. Well, when I play games with people that are better than me, it's not fun. Well, you're playing against the computer here in this scenario. Okay. So right. who gives a crap what the computer thinks about you? <laughs> computer will remember that. Um, super Tennis. <laughs> 
I don't know. Super well, tennis. Okay, so it's you, a they had an opportunity to make, you know, Mario tennis and stuff back then, but yeah. they they just yeah. didn't do it. They just made like this I'm using scare quotes here, realistic Mar- uh, tennis <laughs> game with like squat little dumb looking characters yeah. and it's, it's not fun. Super tennis and super soccer are interesting cuz like they're not bad. Like, you know, they're pretty good, but they just don't really ever reason to exist. Every year <laughs> there is a better version of those games though. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, it's just like it's not like NHL 94 where you go back to it for like a reason. Yep. No reason to go back. The Virtual Boy shipped with a Mario Tennis game. <laughs> was that the first one? That's what, yeah. that's what I was just going to ask. Was yeah. that the first Mario Tennis game? No, so that fir- was. Was that the first Mario sports Super game? Super Tennis has Mario in it? Oh, Mario Tennis. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I guess that would be the first Mario uh, Tennis game, unless the 64. No, the 64 one was a couple years later, right? And is it the first Mario sports game? Not counting Mario Kart. Whoa. Wait, there's there's no, Mario Golf. NES Golf Open. Mario NES Golf. Golf. Yeah. Open. yeah, good call. Um, but uh, the, Which is great. That game is so good on NES. I love it. That, that golf game, it's so fun to play 18 holes in that. Uh, but uh, the, uh, yeah, that, that Virtual Bit Boy game is pretty good. I like it a lot. That's one of the good ones? Yeah, it has this like really cool, well, every Virtual Boy game is a perfect masterpiece. <laughs> That's true. So <laughs> all what? Take that, take this with a great assault. All 16 of them or whatever. But like, I remember like just looking into that inky black background for all those levels and just thinking it was like the most futuristic thing I've ever seen. It still looks futuristic. Uh, it, it still looks very cool. Uh, this list of uh, SNES games on Switch, we don't have Final Fantasy 3 slash 6 yet, uh, but we do have Breath of Fire from Capcom, which is yeah. a totally solid JRPG. Well, and that gives me hope that we're going to see more Capcom you know, SNES games. They had great output on that. Console. I mean, I think there are four Breath of Fires on Super Nintendo alone. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm Hopefully we can get some better Capcom games than Breath of Fire. <laughs> I, never I mean, played the, the those are supposed to be fine. I think I played We also have Demon's Crest. That's four Capcom was yeah. the first Breath of Fire, Fire I played. So. Four? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Kirby's Dream Course, is that a good one? Yeah, it's not, great. Sam, you don't need to weigh in on this. Like well, that's it. not even like a, a proper, proper Kirby game, so maybe it's the only okay good Kirby it. game. <laughs> is it the Putt-Putt Kirby game? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's a perfect Kirby game. It's very... I, All the Kirbys are either ones to threes, and this is a 10. I just revisited that because I put some extra games on my SNES Classic, and that was one of them. And, uh, and it is really, really good and really fun. It is very abstract and not clear at all like how... You need to like read like a uh, Kirby's Dream Course 101 to like understand what's going on <laughs> in that game. Yeah, it has like a first of all that that is in the SNES Classic Collection. Oh, uh, so you, you play it, <laughs> no matter oh. if you added it, it's even better. <laughs> um, but uh, because yeah. then you get two of two copies of it. <laughs> and it, yes, so uh, that game has like this like really in depth kind of physics engine mm-hmm. situation where it's like you know it's just like any golf game where you can do backspin or, or top spin and like hit things around, but it has this like really cool trajectory it shows you. And I loved playing. I love playing with it. It's so smart. It's just like a really cool game. And it wasn't always a Kirby game, which is probably why it's good. Um, Pilot Wings. Tom, you can speak on a podcast. You don't need to just take it. I mean, I'm letting you have your wrong opinions. We don't have to fight about <laughs> yeah. this here. I like the uh, hoisted on his own petard. What's the two Kirby games with styluses? Those are good games. Uh, Canvas Curse is one of the ones you're thinking of. Not the Wii U one. Mm. Yeah, Canvas Curse was on DS. Yeah, yeah, Canvas Curse was on DS. That was mm-hmm. the other one where he's a ball that you're moving between points and not mm-hmm. actually directly. Great controlling. game. <laughs> it is a really uh, good I don't remember what the other one, the name of the other stylus one was. Yeah, yeah. Kirby games are great, man. Kirby yep. Superstar is pretty good. Yeah. Wait, how can you like Kirby <laughs> Superstar if Kirby Superstar is literally just a bunch oh, of Oh, I Kirby only games? like Kirby Superstar because it has uh, got- one game in it that has a reference to you know Metroid and Earthbound and stuff. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, I think the uh, I think the 16 bit Kirby games. You know, I think Sam's being a little mean. I think modern Kirby. That's like the Kirby for babies, where it's like you can sleepwalk your way through it. Kirby has gone the way of Yoshi a little bit in that mm-hmm. they've just made leaned into the cute and made those games simpler and easier, which is not like a terrible thing, but it is definitely less interesting to me than some of the early SNES games. And Kirby's Adventure is one of the most impressive looking NES games. It's in, it's <laughs> unbelievable yeah, very that, late, that game late, is on the NES. Very late NES game. What do you guys think is unbelievable about that game? They the, shrink it down to like a yeah. third of the screen and the whole thing's a HUD no, so it, they can it make it work. It almost looks like it could be a 16-bit game. I agree. Uh, it just doesn't have enough it has, colors. It has eight colors. I know, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have enough colors. And three of them are yellow. <laughs> <laughs> you are, I didn't know you were a Kirby hater. Uh, I just said how many, how many Kirby games I liked. I kept on naming them just to temper this. In, in Pilot Wings, there's one fun thing you can do. Yeah. Turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Go outside. <laughs> you know, you can jump out of a plane and not... Not, uh, not open your parachute. Yeah, okay. not open your parachute. So, so this sort of pervasive dislike of Pilot Wings caught me off guard this week. I'm not going to lie because I've never played the original, but I know Nintendo loves it. They made it a Smash Bros. stage. They did all this uh, other stuff with it. Yeah. I just think there's, there's some not nostalgia much for it to do today. 
Like at the time when it was a launch title for the Super Nintendo, you could play it. There was a cool uh, early 64 incarnation of it, which was like really impressive to like see the the, yeah. the, the, the physics and the camera rendering and stuff. And then there was a Wii Sports Resort like kind of version of it. Yeah. What's it called? They, they Pilot use, Wings. Yeah. I, Pilot Wings Resort. Was that it? Yeah. So um, like they use that island from Wii Sports Resort, yeah. which is really interesting. Wahoo too. Island. I, I, I really like that game actually. Wahoo. They use Pilot Wings as a tech. You know, it was a launch game on the SNES and a launch window game, or maybe launch game on the N64. I think it was a launch game. And they use it to show off their, their new tech. And even though- The tech even, is just spinning ground. That's all it is. <laughs> the ground just spins. And no, then, it also comes at you. And it comes at you. That's a good point. Well, spinning. The ground spins in Mario Kart. Yeah. Well, I'm excited- <laughs> to, to poor effect. <laughs> I'm excited to see ground spinning for myself this time. Tom, you can jump out of a plane and not open your parachute. In pilot wings? Yep. That's, that's messed up. That's the most fun thing you can do. <laughs> uh, wow. Check it out. Stunt Race FX was probably impressive at the time. Nah. No? No. At, <laughs> the, time, the, at the time, it was thought of as clunky, too. Uh, mm. Seth Macy loves this game. Shout out to Seth Macy. Um, this is all, uh, you know, you have to pay for Nintendo Online, but it's all free with Nintendo Online. Yeah. Like, that's really great. Like, I didn't subscribe to that service for over a year. Like, I didn't subscribe when Smash came out, when Splatoon was, you know, big. I didn't care. But, like... They just keep doing, you know, between Tetris 99 and the new Kirby game and, you know, now SNES games, which I actually care about, like, what a, like, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, like, it's turned into a really excellent value and service. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. And, and on top of that, like, I saw someone tweet out during, after the SNES games got announced uh, that they were like, man, that $20 a year is really looking more appealing, and they were serious, and I was like... Wait, that's only twenty dollars a year? Yeah, a year. Like that's because. insanely cheap. I will say, you know, I was just praising it and they deserve praise for it being so cheap. But it is kind of a bummer that like it, it sounds like you can only just rent these classic games mm. now. Like you mm. don't really have an option where like I want to exchange No virtual console to buy them. Yeah, I want to exchange money for, you know, Super Mario World and just have it. It's like at some point, even though it's super cheap, you're probably gonna stop paying for it and then your access goes away. Like that, yeah. that doesn't feel good. Yeah. Have you guys heard how these work on planes? I think nope. you were there when we were talking about this yesterday. Nope, nope, nope. But it's like you can, uh, there, there are actually like ROMs on your system. And you're, you can play them, but you do like a check every 24 hours mm. uh, to make sure that you're still a, you know, a service member. So like mm. that means that you can like go on a plane as long as it's under 24 hours, you're going to be fine. You can play Link to the Past. Yeah. I'd hope it's less than 24 hours of the flight. I don't know if you're flying to Australia or. Mm. Boy, hopefully you have the internet that check. <laughs> Uh, of course, these last uh, few games don't need too much introduction. Mario World, Super Metroid, Link to the Past, some of the greatest games of all time. Definitely play those if you haven't yet. Although, r real quick, on that online thing, because uh, it's the, the fact that the Switch doesn't have an online browser means that you still can't log into Wi-Fi in airports and you can't log into Wi-Fi in hotels because no, almost all of those Wi-Fi places say, hey, please approve this like a user agreement. It's a dialogue. I'm trying to think. I mean, I feel like I've done it in an airport before. I've never logged into my Wi-Fi on my Switch in a hotel or on an airport. I think it brings up a dialogue in the system settings. I, I don't actually know. Maybe it's maybe some and not others, mm. but I've had trouble with that in the past, though, and I know it is a problem with traveling. You know how to force too. those to pop up in a browser? No. If you're having trouble, you go to a secure site, HTTPS, oh. and it'll pop it up. Mm. Pro tip. It Pro works tip. every time. <laughs> Um, I might be wrong about that. Maybe you have to take it off. <laughs> the opposite? Yeah. One of the two. One of the two. <laughs> try both. <laughs> yeah, try both. The thing about these Jalico games that are on here is that there are better Jalico <clears throat> games. They put out R-Type 3. Could have put, they yeah. could have included that they one. They did R-Type? The R-Type 3. Because that's, okay. Um, and then all of the uh, bases loaded games, the super bases oh, loaded games are good. Those, those are like good baseball games. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of their... They also had a game called Utopia, which is like a god sim game, but I don't know how good it's supposed to be. They made some bad games in there. Yeah. There's a bunch of other brawlers, like Tough Enough. <laughs> they did I, Tough Enough? You, you might have noticed I pronounced enough as E apostrophe N-U-F-F. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Subtle. It works. So now that we have Super Nintendo games on here, do you think we're still going to get NES games every month? No. No, you think it's over? No. Yeah, I think it's done. Wow, because they didn't really put out a lot of great <laughs> NES games. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I don't see yep. why there'd, there'd be an incentive to. You don't think that they'll just do like now they'll switch over to like three NES, SNES games and like one NES game or something like that? No. Okay. Yeah. 
I think ba- they based I, off I hope nothing. They will. <laughs> right. I, I guess that's the other thing is like I was like oh, I think they will, and then I guess it's just more like. And I hope they I mean, do. Thank goodness they didn't dole these out three a week. You know, right. I mean, NES, right. NES was my first game console. Like I have tremendous fondness for it. But like SNES, like that's the one that's getting the attention. That's what people wanted and people care about. And like, you know, they're in business to like, you know, get people subscribing to this thing. And SNES yep. is what's going to do it. I just wonder how much of like, how much heavier a lift it is to do both at once, you know, like resources wise for them. Is it, yeah. is it costing them something to do both at once? I think, or you're just asking, I, think, I think continuing to do NES games gains them nothing. Mm. That's a that's an interesting way of putting it. Yeah, like they're just trying to get subscribers now, like yeah. that the Amazon model, yeah, Netflix model, makes sense. Well, we'll see. I hope we still get some NES games. Um, this music cue was a request from Jake. <laughs> it's a game called Zero Tolerance on Sega Genesis. He says he loves oh. it. <laughs> this is pretty much all it does. <laughs> Did you see what kind of game it was? Zero tolerance. Now I don't even know what kind of game it is. It's probably, I'm going to guess it's like a bad dude's yeah. style, like just punching drug dealers in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Zero tolerance in Sega Genesis. Uh, a couple other, there were actually a bunch of other games announced for Nintendo Switch yesterday. Uh, Jedi Knight 2 is announced, and I guess yeah. its sequel, Jedi Academy, is also coming, and these are also coming to PlayStation 4, not to Xbox One, though, for some reason. Mm. Um, I blew my mind that that was on GameCube. I just had no idea. Yeah. Jedi Knight 2 was on PC, GameCube, and Xbox. Cool. I believe. Fun fact, it actually has a still, like, not huge by any means, but, like, kind of vibrant PC community. Because people have modded the heck out of it online, and they've modded it to be, essentially, they just make it what they wanted Battlefront 2 to be, right? With, like, the hero fighting. So they have just these... They modded the heck out of it, and it's really, really a cool community on there doing that. That's neat. Gonna get none of that on Switch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I never played this game. IGN gave it a nine back in two thousand two. Dang, so they liked it. I know Jared Petty was very excited. Yeah, here. Um, I, I I think it's a pretty straightforward, linear, level based uh, third person action game. Yeah, like Force Unleashed or something yeah. like that. Um, but it's also a little confusing because isn't Jedi. I thought it's first person, isn't it? First person, like no, lightsaber shooting. I think it's third person. Third. Okay. Yeah. But isn't Jedi Knight two or wait, Jedi Knight was like Dark Forces two? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. But then, and then, but then, it's a sequel of a sequel. Yeah. But they're the just Dark the Dark Forces. Dark Forces are first person. FPS, yeah. Those are the Doom alike. Okay. Got them. Well, speaking of Doom, Doom sixty four, dude, also un- coming to Nintendo. Switch. Underrated game. I yeah. really love Doom sixty. We have it at our desk right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I plugged that in the other day. It's that really funny. fast. Is like, it best? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, yeah. Well, it was weird because Doom came out for Super Nintendo. And Doom 64 better look better. <laughs> Doom on SNES is so bad. I think, <laughs> oh, I'm worried I may be wrong about that. I think Doom 64 is like 60 FPS. It felt weirdly fast when we were playing it. Like it looked good. But it, but then the, like the graphics are like, the textures are pretty scaled down. They don't and look it, amazing. They were very, it had the, one of the worst examples of that N64 smear on it where everything just looks blurry. Mm. Did you did you see it in the footage yesterday in the stream? I, saw, I watched this. I, I was saying during that, it, it always, Doom 64 and just Doom in general always looks better than I remembered it, but also worse in really <laughs> specific ways. Like I remember it being like immersive and cool and stuff. And then it, I see it now and it just looks ridiculous. But I also am like, oh, it's running kind of well. It, it does a really <laughs> you know, funny. It's kind of interesting. Like it's doing a lot. It has a funny thing that's an adjustment, but then, you know, your, your mind gets used to it where there's enemies above you and below you, but you don't aim up and down. Your shots automatically go up or down if you yeah. just line up the, the single axis. Yeah. I'll take that over the Resident Evil controls any day where it's just you shoot up or down, but it doesn't matter if you're aiming. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Per Schneider of IGN said of Doom 64, make no mistake about it. This is the best update to Doom so far. But if you've played the PC, PSX, SNES, Mac, Saturn, etc. versions to death, you can do without this one. Mm. Fair enough. You know, it's funny that I feel like is exactly what we say about Switch, port, like the Switch port of Doom. And <laughs> if other, you played it before, you can do with that. Yeah. Anytime, like the Witcher 3 too is like, yeah. when we did a preview, hands on preview of that, it was like, yeah, this is great. It's awesome. It's a cool thing that this is going to be on Switch. But if you've played it anywhere else, you can probably yeah. skip this. But Doom 64 is a different game. It's right. not, it's not, it Doom. is a different game. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. That's, and it's, and it's never been like, it's been trapped on the N64. Yeah. That's why I know. Uh, they just announced it for Switch. I don't know if it's coming to PS4 or Xbox One. It would be kind of cool if Doom 64 was on 
Yeah. <laughs> Those other platforms, I think. Well, with Sakurai telling people to go play their Xbox and yeah. Nintendo Direct, anything's possible now. Yeah, that was a cool little moment. <laughs> Talking about uh, Banjo-Kazooie there. Yeah. Keeping it real. <laughs> that smooth organ. I know what that is. I just heard that the other day. You don't know what that is? No, I do know what it is. What is it? <laughs> I, I don't got You should know what that is. I know, because I just heard it. What, yeah, I don't know. what arcade game famously used the uh, Peter Gunn theme? Oh, Spy Hunter. Spy Hunter okay. is right. Uh, all right, uh, yet another new game. Well, not new. New is in quotes game coming to Switch this month, but that wasn't part of the Nintendo Direct. The original Puzzle Quest is getting an HD remaster on, the, on Switch this month. Some new content, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it's the original, full original game with the expansion that was on mm. Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network. Oh, interesting. And then new character classes and new monsters and some new quests that they're adding in there. I've too. never played Puzzle Quest. I loved it, it on comes the PSP. Highly yeah, happy, ready to play again. Yeah, for sure. I mean, because this so it was like 2007. Well, it was interesting, Damon. I don't know if you remember this. It came out on the PSP and DS first. Yes. And neither version was like definitive. Like there was some stuff not in the PSP version and some stuff not in the DS version. And me, you know, that drove me insane at the time. Like I'm like, you always just want to buy the best optimal. Like I have every console. I wanted to buy the best version. And I was yeah. forced to make a choice. But then it came to Xbox Live Arcade, and that was like a really, really it's perfect, great version of that. Perfect for portable. But it was like such a novelty at the time, because in 2007, mm -hmm. RPG elements weren't a part of every game. Mm -hmm. So it was like really novel that they took Bejeweled and then added RPG elements to it. It's, it's, been, it's very funny to think that that has become that's every game. normal now, yeah. and oh. it's ubiquitous now, yeah. and at the time it was novel. <laughs> Well, and even that puzzle RPG, like, you know, Puzzle and Dragons is one of the biggest mobile games on earth. Like that concept of like, you're going to match gems and based off the color you match, you're going to heal or deal damage or yeah. whatever has been done to death. But like, it was really fresh then. Like what yeah. a, what a groundbreaking game. Yeah. Um, and I like to think, uh, GameScoop and IGN was, uh, integral in sort of popularizing. Yeah. You guys puzzle talked Quest. it up, right? That we, and Peggle. We, we definitely championed that game. Loved Peggle. Man, where's Peggle 3? Right. Or just put Peggle on Switch. Yeah. Why isn't Peggle on Switch? I would play Peggle, Peggle, Peggle on Switch. I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's publishing Peggle these days? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. It's yeah. PopCap. There was a Peggle it's game weird. at the launch of the Xbox One. Was I, it Peggle Two? Mm, Is there I, whatever? It was. I think it was <laughs> Peggle Two. I just remember Peggle like getting being free on Steam in the really early days of Steam or something mm, like I that. I remember that too. And it had the the portal levels and the Half Life levels and forgot about that. Yeah, Peggle stuck out stuck with me for a while, man. That goes really good. Uh, Puzzle Quest has its path has been a little bit weird. There was a spin off, a sci fi spin off called Galactrix a couple years later, and then there was proper Puzzle Quest two. Neither of them were as successful as the original, and then. Today, Puzzle Quest is like free to play in mobile games. There's like Marvel Puzzle Quest, mm -hmm. Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest. Really? I didn't know about that one. Yeah. And they're free to play games. I think they're pretty popular. They're Marvel all, Puzzle Quest is very popular, yeah. I think. They're, they're all very good and very well done, but you know, they have all the free to play trappings yeah, that exactly. come along with it. So it's nice to have a, the original. You know, I haven't played the original probably since 2 that well. Whenever it was on Xbox Live Arcade, it would be the last time I played that. Um, Sam, I think you should check it out. Okay. On it. Uh. You know that one? <sighs> yes. That one got you in the feels, man. <laughs> yeah. It's Konami. Is it Konami? It is Konami. Is it Gradius 3? No. Is it Contra something? No. Oh. <laughs> it's Metal Gear. Whoa. The Metal so cool. Gear. Yeah. Let's check in with the listeners. Hey, hey listeners. Listeners, remember you can always reach us at the email address, gamesgoop at igen.com, just like Corey did. Corey says, I've been in an all digital game future, even trading in my discs to buy the digital versions instead. Whoa. No discs to manage, no getting up to switch games. I was living the life. But last week in the middle of my Resident Evil 2 playthrough, my console died. Now all my games are trapped behind a $400 paywall right before a new console generation. I know the gaming industry has more to lose than the movie industry when it comes to digital media, but is there any way we could see a movies anywhere type service for games? If we are moving to an all digital future with games, I feel like this is a major kink that will need to be addressed. Thank you for all you do. Game Scoop is the only place I get my weekly scoops. Are you all familiar with movies anywhere? Um, no. 
It's really interesting. It's I, like when you buy your, the Blu-ray, right? No, it's I don't understand how they got this together and why in the world it makes sense from a business standpoint. But it's a thing where regardless of what digital platform you buy your movie on, so if you buy it on Amazon or you buy it on the Microsoft Store or like Vudu, which is Walmart's you know digital game digital movie service, or iTunes, um, anywhere you buy those digital movies, you sign up for a Movies Anywhere account, it's free, and then those movies all carry over to the other platforms. So if I buy Avengers Endgame on Amazon, I can log into my iTunes and see it in iTunes. What? That's cool. Just a, that's just a thing that exists. How, how would, yeah, the business side of that hurts my head. Yeah, so like, I, how would they agree I to that? I cannot imagine the lawyering that required <laughs> to get it off the ground. But, um, but I, you know, I did it. I went through and, you know, digitized my movie collection and signed up for movies anywhere. Totally works. So you can buy, like you can, I bought the Martian on sale on Vudu for like four bucks. And now I have it on all my, you know, anywhere I have digital movies. I'd love to see something like that with games. My guess is the movie well. studios, the eggheads in the movie studios got together and said that the main reason people don't want to buy digital is because then they're trapped behind like, you know, do I buy it on iTunes? Do yeah. I buy it on Amazon? So what they had to gain probably outweighed what they had to lose by, you know, now your Amazon movies are accessible on their mortal enemy platform. Which is not the case with Sony for PlayStation. Right. And so the game companies would have to get together to yeah. say, well, you know, what we have to gain outweighs what you have to lose. And I don't know if that's the case. But isn't Google Stadia kind of the gaming version of that? No. No, it's not? No, it's not. <laughs> Even though because you could play your game on your TV or on your mobile phone or on your iPad or on your laptop. But not on your Xbox or your PlayStation. You don't right. need those mm. to play it on your TV. <laughs> My immediate reaction to this was why you why you don't have to buy a new system when your system breaks. Like there's recourse. You, can, you mean just have it repaired? Yeah, get, get it repaired for sure. Mm. Well, also just the fact that he's gone digital doesn't have anything to do. Even if you were playing on discs, if his system broke, his games would still be trapped behind a four hundred dollar paywall, right? That's, that doesn't have anything to do with it being point. all digital. That is a good point. Yeah. That was a little. I feel like we got Jedi mind tricked here. <laughs> like you, you can't play the physical game yeah, either. I know. I will say uh, the the. When Dauntless came out on PS4, I think it was recently, um, that's like the kind of Monster Hunter light mm -hmm. free-to-play game. Mm -hmm. They've done cross-account play and cross-account progression, and mm -hmm. you can log in on your PC and play there and then go play on PS4, and you have the same account. And it is so refreshing to see a game just yeah. no catches embrace that. Yeah, Fortnite, I mean, you know. Fort, Fortnite does it as well, but it's I'm I'm just glad it's happening more yeah. because there are a lot of games like Warframe and other online games that don't and can't for various reasons. And I hope that this future, even if it's not the companies coming together, I hope that developers take the initiative to kind of make that happen a little bit more where they can. Mm -hmm. We are slowly and steadily getting to a point where, um, you know, that's less... It used to, like, be big headline news, but now we saw... Um, Divinity Original Sin 2 yeah. is on the Switch and your cloud saves carry over between Steam and Switch. Like That's so cool. Yeah. It's weird and awesome. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. Since these companies are in the business of selling game consoles, which is the primary difference between them and you know the movie yeah. studios, yeah. I think that will stop us from ever getting to a place where you can buy a digital game on one console and then play it on another console. Mm. I, I think it's going to be relegated to uh, quality of life stuff like game saves carrying over and playing with your friends that are playing on other platforms and things of that nature. But once again, with Google Stadia, you don't need the consoles. We get it, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's a completely different thing. Well, you want to be able to play your games too. Yeah. We'll see if Google Stadia. Well, that's a whole, that. that's a whole other scenario though. I just, I'm just saying it's the closest thing you, with video games to this movie's anywhere. Thing. What, what Stadia makes it so you're not trapped behind a device, which is very relevant in the case of a system dying, but it doesn't mean that you're not still trapped behind a platform, I guess is the difference. You're still, you're still beholden to Google. You're stuck in the Stadia ecosystem. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And there's also like, like said, a consequence there. Like one thing about the, the movie situation is that if iTunes just goes away tomorrow, you can still see your movies. They don't, they're not gone forever. If Stadia goes away, then everything's gone. That's yeah. <laughs> that part's true. I there's should a little say, bit of preservation there. My assumption, I love movies anywhere and I'm all in on it and use it. But my assumption is that it will implode at some point. <laughs> and like, I don't know what happens. Like, let's say one third of your movies anywhere collection was bought on iTunes and then iTunes blows up. Mm. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if those games are in your other libraries permanently. I like, I haven't read the fine print, mm -hmm. but like right now today it works as advertising. It's great. It's true. 
That's why you should only buy stylus-based media. <laughs> only laser discs. What's the other stylus? Uh, Vi- video Kirby game. Video disc. Kirby's stylus. Oh yes, yes. I Stylish stylus. <laughs> I want to know what that game. Is. I like the. Uh, What's that? <laughs> oh, well, I was going to bring up something off topic. That's fine. Is it, it that it smells like popcorn in here? Oh. Because <laughs> it's the, popcorn day at IGN. It is popcorn. Wait, does it already smell? Do you think Mark's making it? You smell it? I already I saw know. it. I he, walked right by He really it. screwed up the popcorn. But was Mark Medina making it? No, Pablo was making it. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. good, um, good. <laughs> what you, was, you can smell that, right? Yeah. I now that you mention it. Okay. I, don't, I don't have a sense of smell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I was going to say that I bought and downloaded the new free-to-play Kirby game, and I like it. Yeah. Uh, well, what does Tom think? <laughs> <laughs> it's a wow! Well, how things have flipped. Yeah, <laughs> it is a casual. It's Monster Hunter. It what? is. It is two D Monster Hunter with Kirby characters. Four players true. go Which in and take. Doesn't down, sound bad. It's each you know gameplay segment is probably sixty seconds long. Of it's a four player boss fight, and that's all it is. It's four players beating up on a boss until it dies, and then you earn you know loot and stuff to upgrade your Kirby. It's the, the the problem I have with it is that it is a mobile game that they released on Switch, and it just like it's it's not a lot of literally those. a mobile game. He's using mobile as a pejorative right now. I yes. kind of am exactly. Uh, it's it's not as egregious as I initially thought it was with microtransactions because it kind of doesn't let you spend more than like forty dollars, which is just the price of a game, right? Like that's their idea. Well, and the and the minimum buy in is fifty cents. Which, yeah, like, you see a lot of games do shady stuff where like you know there's some five dollar pack of stuff you want, but the cheap this thing amount of currency you can buy is like nine bucks yeah it's like okay it, it's you, not you as bad as that but <laughs> i'm just really disappointed that we got a surprise kirby launch and it's not just like a game it has like that vigor system which is like the you can only f- do so many fights in a certain time period and you have to oh, check in so at the gem apple tree every 12 hours to get your gem apples and but the gem apples are free <laughs> premium currency so yeah. that's that's their compromise. pro gem apples on gem apples. But I'm just saying like, that you Gimables. phrasing that as a negative, like there could just be no gem apple tree and then you would get no <laughs> premium currency. Yes, that's true. It's more generous. So it's like it's more generous French. than many games like this. Yeah. I just really don't like a first party Kirby game coming out on Switch and just being like full of these mobile trappings. Yeah. I mean, all that stuff, like, you know, I play a lot of mobile games, so I'm sort of like over it. I've made my peace with it. But like, <laughs> if that game was just $9.99 instead and then didn't have any of that garbage, like how much of a better world would that be? I'd be fine. I'd, yeah. I'd, yeah. Exactly. Like $9.99. No garbage. Tom's in. It could be 20. Like it could be 30 and I would well, be sure. I mean, I plucked but 20 that. with some garbage. Mm, no, I got, honestly, like 20. Even there like some- I would take any amount of paying for this game over all of these systems that right. are like you can only do this many missions per ten that's, minutes. That's the like, that stuff point. drives like, me crazy. Don't zero in on the nine ninety nine. Like the point is, how many free to play games would just be better off if they uh, had a cost up front and then yeah. removed all their microtransactions? Yeah. So. And you can pay forty dollars, and it essentially does that because of the amount of premium currency it gives you, but it doesn't fully remove that limitation. And I think that's stupid. Even if the game is like simple but fun. All right, let's move on from this Kirby garbage. <laughs> <laughs> what's with the music cues this week? What do you mean, what's with the music cues? Am I not picking good ones? Yeah, kind of not, no. How do you like gem apples? <laughs> <laughs> was that's that from Yoshi's Island. Yeah, was that so, slowed down or is that a weird section? I don't remember it's that. Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy. Say. Oh, is it that? Se- it's, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Great moments. I used to own that domain. Fuzzy Touching. This is Robert from Port Orange, Florida. Says, hello, mega cops. Thanks for all that you do. My wife and I had our first baby four and a half months ago. My wife is a night shift nurse, so I am with the baby three nights a week. My baby sleeps better on my shoulder in the recliner than in her crib. Mm. This gives me plenty of time to catch up on older episodes. I have an Xbox One X and a Pro. PlayStation 4 Pro. I haven't been much of a Nintendo guy in recent years. I had a GameCube and a Game Boy SP. But anyway, I've been wanting a handheld to play. I thought about a Switch, but decided on a PSP 3000. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Never had one before. I picked up God of War, Chains of Olympus, and Ghosts of Sparta, along with some other sports games. I was wondering if you all had some recommendations for must-plays. I like most all genres except turn-based RPGs. Ah, there goes my recommendation. What was going to be your recommendation? Persona 4 Golden? Valkyria Chronicles. And Persona Uh, 4 is also actually a really good shout but yeah the but, Valkyria but Chronicles 2 and only in Japan 3 are relegated to the PSP so you have to press on the Vita or is it on PSP oh yeah that's no Vita. Golden is Vita I want to say yeah. Vita mm-hmm. 
I conflate those two in my I head. really like the Metal Gear on PSP uh, called uh, Peace Walker. There's also Metal Gear Acid 1 and 2. Those are card games. Really cool card strategy games. But there's another Metal Gear, um, Portable Ops. Well, Peace also, Walker is the one that, you know, is, has a really, really excellent yeah, reputation. I I've think it's the it. second best to five. Yeah. Peace Walker. I've actually never played Peace Walker. Yeah, it's a very five-like game, but it's, uh, you know, kind of still has some, some quirks. Loco Roco yeah. and uh, Patapone. Yeah. Patapone, I think, is my favorite PSP game. It's a great game. Either Patapone well, or Loco Roco. And don't relax a game. Loco Roco is fun. It's not like it, it's it's not going to blow the lid off anything. But it's Patapone, a Kirby game, basically. <laughs> my, Patapone, I think, is like legit amazing. Well, don't forget Luminous. Yeah. Mm. Started on PSP. Best puzzle game ever made, in my opinion. Except for Puyo Puyo. Um, my enduring memory of the PSP is playing DJ Max Portable, which oh. I imported from Korea. Was- what is that? Is it, I assume it's a rhythm game? Yeah, it's a rhythm game. It's probably my favorite rhythm game. Uh, there's a Hot Shots Golf game on PSP. Oh, man. That'd be a good match. Hot Open Shots team. on PF- PSP is so good. Hot Shots Golf is great. They also have Burnout Legends. That's a great way to play a burnout today because they don't make burnout games anymore. You can get a, <laughs> is that like a burnout like with actually like the car crashing puzzles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, there's yeah. none of those. Now. You can get uh, Spider-Man 2 on UMD, the movie. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> yep. there's that. Uh, they have GTA Vice City Stories and Chinatown Wars is on PSP. Mm. Oh. So, so Chinatown Wars was on KS was the and then DS. came to PSP? Yep. What about Liberty City Stories, maybe? They're probably on. I mean, if they're on there, yes, those are also recommended. Um, and then there's a siphon filter. I think there's two siphon filter yeah, games. Those are big. Yeah. Those are cool third person shooters. Then I had some uh, RPGs a- to recommend, but I didn't realize yeah. he didn't like RPGs. What about <laughs> um, classic game stuff? There was like an art type that was like an RPG a little bit. Ooh. And then there was. Yeah, a, you're right. Um, and then there is a uh, uh, Castlevania collection with Symphony of the Night and Bloodlines. Yeah. Or, or Rondo. Lines, uh, Rondo. Yeah. Rondo of Blood. Yeah. Is that what it was? I think if you there, can just play Symphony of the Night on it, then that's I think there was Ultimate Ghouls and Ghosts on that PSP. Was, oh, and uh, Mega Man Fired Up. Powered Up. Powered Up, yeah. yeah. Which is that a remake. So weird. A remake of the first one? Just one, yeah. Yep. Just, With like a chibi art style. Yeah, yeah. It's I don't think a little I've ever odd. heard of that. Yeah. It, I mean, I guess the console is probably super cheap in the games, but it's odd to get a PSP when you're not an RPG fan. Like, it's one of the, <laughs> it's one of the great RPG consoles. Mm. Also odd not to get a Nintendo Switch and <laughs> to get a PSP instead. Well, it's probably a lot cheaper. I get I'm it, sure. yeah. I'm sure. Play, playing games like 10 years late is actually a really cost-effective way to do I mean, it. Yeah, we've talked about how great it is to get a system when you when, when it, with this full library. Yeah, even too. like even like yep. one year late. It's like Assassin's Creed Odyssey is regularly 10 to $15. <laughs> <like>. <laughs> uh, let's check out this issue of Nintendo wow. Power where they are doing their damnedest to try and sell people the... Uh, the Virtual Boy. It's the future of gaming. I don't know about the editorial independence of this issue. <laughs> of this <laughs> issue in particular. Well. Sam, do you want to do the honors? Yes, please. Yeah. Do those 3D glasses work in the magazine with things? I don't it, know. Just like the Virtual Boy. Does it? Is it working? <laughs> is everything, does everything look 3D? What's supposed to look 3D? <laughs> I don't know, but this is Chrono Trigger, a preview of Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Um, I really, let me just see the cover real quick. Okay. Does it yeah, cover this green? This is 3D. Wow. Whoa. This looks cool. fantastic. Wow. Fantastic. You guys might need to check It's over 20 out. years it's old. Segment. Is it better or worse than the Virtual Boy? Just look at it real It's quick. not going to work for me. It will. Damn it. It's not going to work for me. What does that mean? It means my eyesight is too poor to see this 3D tricks. I think this might work. <laughs> this is the one that's going to work. It's a different type of 3D. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> It's subtle, but it's nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass. Look at the ass. So, <laughs> Justin's so, gonna pass. A dog yeah. flying away. I don't think it's gonna work for me. Does it look like it's flying at you? Oh, that one's not 3D. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just the cover and maybe some sections inside. I've never seen like it's paper dog. 3D work with clear, like just polarized lenses, other than red blue before. Right. That's it cool. works. It works darn well. Yeah. All right, I'll wear those anyway. Oh, I, I need the issue. <laughs> <laughs> We're not just passing the issue around. <laughs> this issue is all about the Virtual Boy, but they're also going to mention uh, Yoshi's Island in here, Chrono Trigger, the Ninja Gaiden trilogy. I like uh, this right on the oh inside gosh. flap. There's an ad here. For- <laughs> <laughs> there's Why an ad do this? trying to get people to subscribe to IGN, and they've got a kid's no, no, face it's a on Nintendo here. Power. Oh yeah, it's a Nintendo Power. Sorry, <laughs> and they've got a, a kid here as a nerd, you might say, and it says, "Hey, this is the nerd talking to us." It says, "Hey, bro, 
I heard your subscription to Nintendo Power is almost over, so I was thinking maybe you shouldn't renew. I mean, it's only 18 bucks for a whole other year, but I could tell you a lot about video games too. And since everyone thinks you're cool, I'll just hang with you like best friends and stuff. I'll show you this one trick for mental combat. Wait, stop, you gotta stop. <laughs> you what gotta a stop. weird ad. Is so this ad encouraging you not to talk to people? Well, yeah, the ad, the whole is, ad is subscribe like, to this magazine or this nerd's gonna talk to you all the time. <laughs> that's, that's what the ad is saying. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Uh, but everybody I'm that dead. subscribed to Nintendo Power was that kid. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, but yeah. I want to know if that worked. I want to know how many people saw that ad and were like, man, I got to re-up. They already had Nintendo Power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're having some fun in the uh, letter section here. Here are top 10 games that didn't quite make it. Number 10, not so Final Fight. <laughs> oh, boy. I see. They're doing a little. Number nine, little Madden jokes. NFL Draft 95. <laughs> Number eight, Immortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. Number seven, WWF cooked. So, that, so Raw is the joke there. <laughs> Raw existed back then. Number six, NBA jelly. <laughs> I, uh, the That's jam. a good one. All right. All right. I I'm, like that I'm one. Catching on. Number five, Star Squirrel. Starfly. Okay. Number four, Michael Jordan, pre- Michael Jordan presents minor league baseball. Because he didn't he play went. baseball? No, because he did. He, he did was terrible. Like he went to the Scottsdale Scorpions. That was the whole what? joke in uh, in Space Jam, is that he was like in, in the MLB and bad. Number three, The Legend of Helga. <laughs> Number two, Super Mario Triplets. I, I mean, they could still be called bros. It's not like twins. <laughs> and number one, Final Fantasy Island. That's that's number. Oh, one. So that's, that's making fun of the terrible show Fantasy Island. Is what's yeah. Okay. Is that show terrible? I'm I'm glad we went through all of those. Well, it doesn't <laughs> hold up. Let's just go with it. Power charts. Super NES top twenty. Number one is Donkey Kong Country. Yes, mm. ninety four. Yeah. Well, it's ninety five nope. already, but yeah. I would have been sick of it by then. Followed by Final Fantasy three and A Link to the Past. That's ninety five already. Yeah. What what month? October. August. The, so the N sixty four was like a year away. Yes. Exactly. Interesting. Uh, the top 10 Game Boy, number one is uh, Link's Awakening. Then Donkey Kong Land and Metroid 2, Return of Samus. Ugh. And then they just have top 10 adventure games for some reason. <laughs> it's A Link to the Past, Secret of Mana, Super Metroid. Mm. <laughs> some games on here I'm not sure about. Soul Blazer is on there. <laughs> Jurassic Park is on there. Sure. Yeah. This actually makes me feel better about people who, who say that top 10 lists only like are just having destroyed the internet. It's like, no, they were doing it 20 years or 25 years. All right, years this ago. page is 3D AF. Is it still? This yeah. page is 3D? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's insane. This is when the Virtual Boy Every coverage section begins. on that has popped out uh, of the page like two inches. It says, the most daring new gaming system in history arrives this month. Nintendo's Virtual Boy creates real 3D game worlds for players brave enough to take the plunge Get ready for a hardcore, high-tech, in-your-face experience. Let's look at that Blockbuster ad. Oh, yeah. it came with batteries, too. And Playing it was like is random. believing. Do you try it before you buy it. They're telling people to go to Blockbuster and try the Virtual Boy. Did they know? Like, they must have known. They must have known in the run-up to launch that that thing was a dog and a bomb. Yeah, I, I think they well, They knew. had it at CES and stuff, so yeah. they did get to, to, to test it in a market. I, just, no, I, th- I think I, they knew. I'm, like, as you've had that issue on the counter, I've been wondering about that. I'm like... <laughs> They like you do market research, like you know what you're getting into. <laughs> uh, Mario's tennis. I bought one. Mario's tennis was the pack in game. Uh, they, they go through everything here Jack Brothers, Virtual League Baseball, Water Jack World. Brothers is a, is a Persona Universe game. Yeah, really? Yeah, you've seen the Jack Brothers because they're in yeah, every the Persona game. It's they're the... like little snowmen looking guys. Have yeah. you played oh! all these games? Then? Do you own all these games? I own every game in that issue. How's Galactic Pinball? It's stupid. You've played it, I think you played it at my house. I don't remember that one. How is Tellero Boxer? Tellero Boxer's uh, yeah. Black Pinball is I mean, better than Tellero Boxer. Uh, There's a cool flight game. I'll say this about the Virtual Boy: the sprite work on these games is great. Yeah, it's like really if good. these were like regular looking like 16 bit sprites, they would look great. Mike Drucker, a uh, friend of the show, had a, a, amassed uh, basically a complete Virtual Boy collection, which I bought from him and have now subsequently completed, except for this one fishing game that I should have bought in Japan because it was eight bucks. <laughs> Mario Clash, I've talked about before. I, I played this on a TV without the 3D effect. Very cool game. Hard to play on the TV. A listener of GameScoop gave me my final key to the collection, which was Nestor's Funky Bowling. <laughs> and he gave me, he sent me a sealed copy of it. See, I've never played the Virtual Boy ever. I'll, well, we have one in a cabinet here, and I have two at my house. I should bring it in. Uh, one of them yeah. is going to be working. Uh, all of them have like an eyeball out, except for one of the three that I have in my current position. So I'll have to figure out what that is. 
Whoa, lost you there. Yes. Uh, I'm back. Later on this issue is a, an eight-page preview of Street Fighter Two on Game, Game Boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> How can you tell which one's Blanca? <laughs> eight pages on that sucker. Um, what? <laughs> What do they have to say? Uh, they just go through all the different uh, fighters. You know, what are they going to say? Oh. That's cool. The Chrono Trigger is in there, but it also just shows you how much Chrono Trigger is buried in Ogre Battle. Oh and also, gosh. was Chrono Trigger oh, this is the RPG section? Yeah, Chrono they called Trigger it epic. Was that late in the SNES? Oh yeah, yeah. Life ninety five. Yeah, I always think about like you know because that's like Donkey Kong Country two three. Like that's very late SNES. And then Mario RPG came out after that. Yeah, Mario RPG came out after Mario sixty four. Yes. How oh, weird. Yeah, so I guess Nintendo Power called their RPG section Epic. Yeah, they had Epic. A little, this uh, was very short-lived. They had a little like, imprint. Yeah. Just a couple issues. And then they're talking about Ogre Battle here, the Super Nintendo game. But the, it's like this whole spread, and if you just j try to read any of this, it doesn't make <laughs> any sense. The Great Pumpkin. Most players are smashed by pumpkins when they take on the Witch Deneb in Deneb's garden. You would be out of your gourd not to want a few of these magical warriors in your army. Pumpkins can be recruited only during neutral character encounters throughout the game. An item called the Glass Pumpkin gives your witch leaders the ability to recruit neutral pumpkins in various towns in the game. And well, it this go is what it goes game on. Didn't sell. Yeah, it's game help. Mom, I want it the pumpkin on. game. <laughs> Which one, Jack Brothers? Howling at the Moon. There are two common or methods for adding a werewolf to your army. You can recruit <laughs> werewolves by using vampire leaders, or you can use the werewolf virus on a fighter. Pick up the werewolf virus by defeating Sirius in the district of Janinia. Got it. Like, what? What game was it for? Deadly Dungeons? That's Ogre Battle. Oh, yeah, that's all Ogre Battle. It's a game yeah. guide. It's tips. This is Sam's favorite section, classified information. Yeah. They've got uh, help and tips on True Lies, Mega Man X2. Yogi Bear. Sequest. <laughs> Yogi Bear. <laughs> WWF Raw, not cooked. Kirby's Dream Course is in here, so that's, that's relevant. What's, what's the tip? Uh, name change. How to change your name. Once you started <laughs> a game, you won't normally be able to change your name. What? <laughs> <laughs> Agent number 669 has discovered a way around this problem. Who's that? Is it a go, button combination? Go to the member screen and highlight the file you want to change. Hold the L and R buttons, then press the A button to go to the enter name screen. Nice. After you enter your new name, go to OK and resume the game with your golfing achievements intact. There's no way just a person discovered that at Nintendo Power. No, it's Agent 669. Who is that? Why, does, why is that irrelevant that's information? On a, that's on a need-to-know basis, Justin. <laughs> The uh, magazine had a limited amount of like <laughs> space to fill, and they chose to <laughs> fill it with Agent 669. It makes no sense. There's a big spread on Ninja Gaiden Trilogy, which collected... That's the, a very the, rare Super Nintendo Collected cartridge. the three yeah. NES cool games. Idea, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Huh. And I don't think... They didn't really did much upgrade the much, graphics. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a little emulation pack. It's cool. There's <laughs> also a big spread on Judge Dredd for Game Boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I guess it was I tough. I played Judge Dredd for Super Nintendo a lot. Uh, this is not the uh, Super Nintendo yeah. version. And here we are, Counselor's Corner, which is pretty pretty close to classified information. Now you're gonna. Now you know who Agent Six Six Nine is. <laughs> is it Terrell Dunn or <laughs> Dennis Carino? We don't know. You know this game, Brain Lord, on Super Nintendo. No, <laughs> what a great that. title. That is a great title. <laughs> but someone wants to know in Brain Lord, why are bubbles floating off my character? And uh, Terrell, <laughs> Terrell. <laughs> Helpful Terrell provides advice. Rising bubbles do not mean you're suffering from indigestion. Floating bubbles indicate that your character is poisoned. Oh. The universal sign for poisoned in every yeah. RPG. Stuff in here for Spider-Man, Octa or uh, Ogre Battle more. How do I improve my reputation? How oh, do I Link's defeat Awakening. undead enemies? Link's Awakening. Why does everyone call me thief? <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> you stole. Yeah. The it's only telling. reason everyone in the game would call you a thief is that you stole an item from the tool shop in Mabe, Mabe, Mabe? Village. Yeah, I, I always said Mabe. Um, that that's back, and we wrote about it. Did you see? Yeah, wrote about it recently. Yeah. Did, did you see the Anuma news where he sort of like stealth leaked, like he hinted at Link's Awakening, mm. and nobody picked up on it? Oh, that, that was that, that yeah, was like, what you wrote like about two it. or three years. Damon, yeah, that might have happened yeah. when you were out. Maybe. Um. So, uh, he Anuma gave an interview. I don't know, you know, two or three years ago, where he was talking about what he wants to make next. And he's like, ah, I might make a thief game, and like everyone wrote it up as like, is Anuma working on a non Zelda game? Blah blah yeah. blah. But he was referencing Link's Awakening. That's pretty good. I like it. You not only get labeled a thief, uh, the shop owner murders you. Yeah. <laughs> you go only to, only you, if you go back in the house. You go to war. If you just never go back to the shop, you're fine. Yeah. Which leads me to my next question. Why doesn't the shopkeeper just save the damn island? Good point. <laughs> That's actually a very good point. And finally, there's the uh, now playing section where they actually review the games that they've covered in this issue. They don't actually give a score. They just give a plus and minus for each game. You know this Game Boy game, Bronchi 
the bronchiosaurus. <laughs> Excuse me? Wait, Bronchi the Bronchiosaurus. That's the name. Yeah. It, is that a, does that count as a caveman game? Uh, it's a mascot game. Yeah. Okay. It has repetitious graphics, they said. Uh, but Chrono Trigger, the, they say it has excellent graphics, depth sound, replay value, battery backed up memory with three slots. The only downside is that you'll be spoiled for every other RPG. Yeah. Does it say how many megs it is? No, it doesn't. Actually, it does. Size, right? yeah. it does. Chrono Trigger, 32 megabits. That's yeah. a big Top part. that. They also review some uh, virtual games like Galactic Pinball. It's only eight megabits. <laughs> Good variety, cool sound effects. The 3D doesn't add much to the way the game is played. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the most Rip. damning thing you yeah. can say <laughs> about the in your cool own boy. <laughs> propaganda magazine. <laughs> Mario's Tennis for, for, for Virtual Boy. They said excellent tennis action and play control, fun characters, singles and doubles, but the downside is no two player option. Yeah, oh. how are you playing two player in your Virtual Boy? <laughs> yeah, they want. I mean, there was no system link or anything. Come on, it's ridiculous. All right, that's enough for uh, this issue of the Virtual Boy issue of Nintendo Power. The last Virtual Boy issue. Yeah, the one, <laughs> the first. In, oh yeah, the the ad on the back is an ad for uh, Nintendo.com AOL keyword cool. in in a way. One of my very first memories of getting online was like N64.com had like a forum mm -hmm. that I was a member of and would post. You know, Mario yeah. 64 secrets. and Wasn't that just IGN? No. Well, you're right. You're right. N64.com was IGN. It must have been Nintendo.com. All right. That brings us to video game 20 questions. Our suggestion this week comes from Robert Wood. Let the questioning begin. That Is this racer? Dragon Quest? That's Super Castlevania 4. Oh, okay. Ooh. Robert Wood. Let the questioning begin. Okay. Does this take place in the Ghosts and Goblins universe? Is that a real question? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could this game have appeared in that issue of Nintendo Power? No. Okay. Well, that was a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> could this uh, game have appeared in an issue of Nintendo Power from uh, the year 2010? Uh, could have, sure. Wait, what does that question mean? Like it means it, it came out between 1996 and 2010. Okay, I also okay, think okay. it. I think it strongly implies that it's an. It came out on a Nintendo console, right? No, because uh, a Nintendo Direct just this week told people <laughs> to go play games on Xbox. Yeah, but that's that's <laughs> new Nintendo. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good hint. So it, yeah, uh, you're right. It, you know that it very strongly implies it's not a PlayStation or Sega or Xbox exclusive. Did this game come out on a Nintendo platform? <laughs> no, don't. We already know it did. <laughs> It wouldn't have... No. <laughs> Don't answer that. Vetoed. Uh, did this game originally come out on a cart? Mm, no. No. no, no. There's way too long At to nose in this one. Well, hold on. Uh, not in the way that you're probably thinking about. Hmm. Not in like the most way that people played it. Well, I'm more lost than ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did this was this game a, a platform exclusive? No. Did it was it made in Japan? No. <laughs> Are you sure this is a video game? <laughs> Maybe it's a book or a comic. That's five. <laughs> uh, is this a first person game? Like played from a first person perspective? Yes. No. Okay. Great. <laughs> we know uh, nothing. You, know, mm. <laughs> we, you realize zero. That, uh, no answers aren't like it doesn't mean like you asked a bad question. They, these all this all gives you information. <laughs> no, but it helps us go down a path to yeah. a, 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 figuring yeah. it out. It a does, no answer is absolutely inferior to a yes answer. Yeah. A no answer is like in Guess Who when they just flip down one thing. Yeah, exactly. It's like not helpful. <laughs> yep. Okay. This come out on the on. Oh gosh, now what to do about the cartridge question? That's I know. It's it means that the cartridge it 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 appeared on a cartridge, but that's not how most people played it. So does that mean it was downloadable? Mm. Um, mm. Or, this, or was it on like a floppy disk? Uh, was this game presented in a four by three uh, ratio? <laughs> yes. You guys are forgetting about a time when there were a games time. being released on discs and cartridges at the same time. Discs. I just found oh. out that time. It's a four by three game. I think I nailed it. So is it, was this, did this game appear on the Nintendo 64? No. What are you... What? Did it appear on the Game Boy Advance? Yes. Ugh. Okay. So there's some yeah. weird game that made it onto Game Boy Advance that we didn't know made it onto Game Boy Advance. X versus Sever. <laughs> yeah. 
Game Boy Advance, but then it would also have been played on elsewhere. Other. So it would have been a game on the Game Boy Advance and a console. Yeah, yeah. or like on a disc based console. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's probably like a weird GBA version of like you know console game. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. like an eight page spread on Street Fighter Two for <laughs> Game Boy. But it could be of a um, even like up through GameCube era game, right? No, GBA is actually. I'm so glad we dialed it on that. No, not Japanese made GBA game. That yeah. also appeared on other And consoles. it's from after 1996. <laughs> but like I said, the cartridge version of this game is not the version that people would be thinking of. Right. Okay. Is this a licensed game? Yes. That's 10. I'm assuming it's like some weird, you know, James Bond. Like a movie Yeah, game? that's yeah. what I was thinking too. Is some, <clears throat> James Bond came to mind, but it's not like GoldenEye because GoldenEye is this Eye based is on a based. film? <laughs> oh. oh, no, it's not. Okay. <laughs> What? That, that Hard makes me no. even more confused. Hard no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like the little giggle, though. Yeah. Uh, same question, TV show? Yes. Okay. Hmm. TV did, show game. Did they make a Seinfeld game? <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's like a... Um, Alf. TV show. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be like like Nickelodeon cartoony games. Or yeah. Oh, but... Ren Stimpy. I'm, I don't know why I'm going to early. Like, I want to know if it's Ren and Stimpy yeah, would not be disc based. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, I wonder if it's like a racer or a platformer or a. Uh, man. My assumption is okay. it's, a, it's a GBA, so it can't be like it, would, it couldn't be too nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'm trying to think there were a lot of like Looney Tunes. Remember games how people too. liked that Astro Boy game? On, on Astro Boy was great. It was on, Treasure, right? Did that come out of anything? But that wouldn't have been. It was GBA. That would be Japanese made too, right? Maybe. Astro Probably. Boy was a Game Boy exclusive. Something's happening. <laughs> so, so there are Looney Tunes games though, but I'm wondering if those are too early because there are there are Ooh. a lot of like yeah. those oh, cartoon man. games. Barely made it. I hope you guys are ready for 25 questions <laughs> because this game is not on Game Boy Advance. Oh no! <laughs> oh, <laughs> but we're at 12. Okay, was this on PlayStation? It, but, was yes, a PS One. It was on pl- what? No. This is not on PlayStation 1. Was it on PlayStation 2? Yes. Okay. Oh, boysies. Okay. All right. That's a good, better track. Licensed right. TV game Ignore on PlayStation everything. 1. Licensed TV or PlayStation game on PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2. Not it, Japanese. Based made. off a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Is this based on a cartoon? Yes. Oh, okay. It's really good. Okay. 15. Not first person, but it wouldn't be with a licensed cartoon. Uh, could be Simpsons Hit and Run. Yep. Yeah. Could oh, be. Simpsons games are a good good way to go. Is this TV show still on the air? Yes. Oh, it's Shh. definitely. Is it? It's definitely uh, is it like Crazy Taxi? No. So it's the other one. What's the other one? It's called? like uh, GTA. Yeah. Is it They're Hit and Run and um, the other one is well, I, I don't know what I don't know which is which. Is this a Simpsons game? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, okay, so, so, so there was Simpsons Hit Run, which is the one that's like Crazy Taxi, no, and we then there was a different Simpsons game. We know, the, we know the game. It's we called. Just, uh, have to think of the name. Is yeah. it called Springfield something? No, it's not that. It's Simpsons something. There's Simpsons Hit and Run, and there's Simpsons. Uh, fucking. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I already, is it called Auto? I already count this as a win. We just can't recall the name of the game. We know the game. Auto. Assaulter. It's, no. It's not a direct GTA pun. It's just open world. It's a GTA like open world Springfield game where you're running around. Is it Simpsons Road Rage? Yeah, that's it. No, that might be the. I don't remember which yeah, one's the Crazy got, Taxi one. No, 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 no. Hit Road? and Run. Hit and Run. Crazy Taxi might be Road Rage. Oh, you're right. I don't know which is which. Ah. We can figure this out. We can't. It's Road Rage. It's Road <laughs> Rage. Road Rage and Hit and Run. I think. Oh. Okay, Hit and Run has got to be the Grand Theft Auto one. I think Hit and Run is the Road GTA Rage is one. the G- is the Taxi one. To clarify, oh, okay. Did you say you said this game was not like Crazy Taxi? Right. Okay. So we. Th- so it's one of those two. So we think yeah. it's Hit and Run. I, I don't remember which is which. I mean, I I don't even know how to. I think you're right. I think Hit and Run is probably the GTA one and Road Rage is the Crazy Taxi one. Yep, we're going with Hit and Run. Yeah. But what if it's neither of those? He said it's a Simpsons game. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. They did make that Simpsons fighting game. (laughs) Yeah, but there's also the Simpsons movie game. That came out on DS. Mm. Is this game like Grand Theft Auto? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then it's... Which one are you guessing? Hit and Run. I hit and run. That's correct. Uh, It's the Simpsons Hit and Run. Man, I almost blew it. 2003, that's the GTA clone. And I just assumed that it came out on Game Boy Advance because they used to port everything to everything. Yeah, they did. 
but it was on PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. And we PC. got it. We got it in twenty anyway, right? Yeah, that was twenty. Yeah, we yeah. So you guys need... still didn't even need the extra boost. Sorry, I misled you there. Can we hear the boss music? Uh, the boss music was. <laughs> oh, and I didn't even play your uh, stage clear music. Oh, cool. Uh, developed by Radical Entertainment, which is apparently still in business, but hasn't put out a game since Prototype Two. <laughs> what are they doing? They helped with Destiny 2. Oh, yeah. So they're like oh. the Division support studio now. Yeah. Well, Studio for Hire. Yeah. It's not working sad. on Destiny anymore. Uh, published by Vivendi Universal, which is not in business anymore. Do you, we didn't get Mario Maker 2 news in the direct, I just realized. No. What a bummer. Were you expecting some yeah. new stuff? Like an update? Yeah. Mm. Nothing for Fire Emblem either, right? Yeah. Although, I, you know, I'm not expecting anything on that one. What are you expecting from Mario Maker 2? I expect them to do a new level type. There is all that rumor where they have the main level types and they say other types, yeah. but there's only one listed, even though it said types and everyone assumed that that meant we were going to get like a Game Boy, you know, Mario Land theme mm. or something. Mario 64. <laughs> or they could do, I mean, they could do Yoshi's Island. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Oh man, that would rule. Sorry. I put that idea in your hands. <laughs> Thank you for the suggestion, Robert Wood. If you have your own suggestions for video game 20 questions, email into me at gamescoop at IGN.com. That is all the scoops that we have for you this week. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Chris Dart, for uh, this magazine subscription. Yeah, Chris Dart sent us a bunch of these, and I think that might be the last one that we uh, had to go through. Uh, hey, my name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out.